Hey guys, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and today we are doing another AP Physics 1 a circular motion problem. So let's take a look at this problem here. Um, as before, I suggest that you pause this video, try to do as much of the problem as you can, and then come back and watch the video and see how I did it. An experiment is performed using the apparatus above. A small disk of mass M on a frictionless table is attached to one end of a string. The string passes through a hole in the table and an attached narrow vertical plastic tube. An object of mass M2 is hung at the other end of the string. A student holding the tube makes the disk rotate in a circle of constant radius R while the other student measures the period P. Derive an equation, derive this equation, okay? That relates the period to the masses here. Okay, so there's kind of a lot of things going on. Um, there's a lot of forces here, there's a circular motion. So you always wanna start with a free body diagram. That's just where it comes at. Free body diagram on both M1 and M2. M1, I have M1G. I have a normal force. Because it's not falling downward, right? This 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 table or this thing, this sliding thing is pushing back up on it. It's frictionless, so there's no friction. And then I have this tension in this rope, because this rope's kind of pulling on it. Okay? That's it. Nothing else is pushing on this object. For M2, I have the tension pulling up and I have M2G going down on this, right? And that's it. Now, what's happening is this thing um, in, on, on M2 is not accelerating. Well, so um, a, a, a few things that balance out. First, in the y direction on M1, Fn equals M1G. Not particularly useful because there's no friction, but that is what the normal force is if it were asking you. Um, in the x, so this is the y direction, net force equation. In the x direction, I have just T. T is the only force here acting in the x direction, right? Where this is um, x and y. That's equal to ma. What kind of acceleration is this feeling? It's feeling centripetal acceleration. That's equal to m times the acceleration, which is v squared over r. But I, so uh, period is related to velocity, right? So um, uh, this tension, like I can't solve this. Um, I'm gonna call this FT to not be confused with uh, period. Okay. But I know FT is also equal to M2G because this thing is not accelerating in either direction. So these forces have to be equal to each other in this guy. So um, I can plug that into here and I get m2g is equal to m1 v squared over r okay so this is the relation now i kind of have to convert this into period right remember what we said is that um for period actually we need to find yeah the period p um if i do velocity times time velocity times the period is 2 pi r the 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 path that it's taking that's the circumference of a circle so the period is equal to 2 pi r over v. So I want to solve this equation for v and then plug it into here. v is equal to m2 g r over m1 square root. And then I plug that into here. And I say okay, p is equal to 2 pi r over the square root of m2 g r over m1. When I when I bring I can bring this to the numerator and flip the ins, flip this m1 over m2 gr. Uh, I, they're using lowercase r, but that's fine. It's not a big deal. Um, this r and this is the square root of r. If I want to bring this inside, I can make it r squared. So that's two pi square root m1 r squared over m2 gr. This will cancel with that. So I get two pi square root m1r over m2g and that's what we got right here all right so done the procedure is repeated and the period is determined for four different values of m2 where m1 equals 0 0.012 kilograms and r equals 0 0.8 meters the data which is presented below can be used to compute experimental value for g Okay, what quantity should be graphed to yield a straight line with the slope that could be used to determine g? So I want g as kind of um, a slope in terms of p. But you see, the problem right here is that g is not um, 
M1 is a fixed value. G is not a slope. So if I had P squared, for example, that would equal 2 pi squared or 4 pi squared times M1R over M2G. And then if I wanted to make this um, um, something where the slope was G as a function of M, I could I could flip this again. I could say 1 over P squared is equal to M2G over 4 pi squared M1R. Okay. So if I plotted this as my y value and this as my x value, then g would be my slope. Okay. So my y values, I need to my x values need to be m2 over 4 pi squared m1r and this needs to be 1 over p squared. Okay. So let's let's use a calculator and plug this in. What's 1 over p squared? 1 over 1.4 1 squared is 0.51. 1 divided by 1.05 squared is 0 0.907. 1 divided by 0 0.a squared is 1.5625. And 1 divided by 0 0.75 squared is 1.778. Okay. And then we have to compute this thing based on M2. 4 pi squared M1R is just a constant, right? So 4 pi squared times, well, so I'm going to do M2, which is 0 0.02 divided by this whole quantity, 4 pi squared times M1. M1 was 0 0.012 and R was 0.8. So this I get to be 0 0.053. 0 0 0.02, then I double it to 0 0.04, and then I get 0 0.106. 0 0.06, I get 0.158. And then 0 0.08, when I do this, I get 0.211. Okay, so this is my x value, this is my y value. So the x axis kind of needs to go up to about 0.2. So we'll say this is 0 0.2. If this is 0 0.2. This is 0.1, this is 0, right? If, um, then the y values need to go from about 0.5 to 1.78. So we're going to say this is 0.5, um, and we'll make this 2. So then this would be 0 0.5, 0 0.75, 1, 1, 2, 5, 1, 5. No, not quite. I can't make it exactly 0.25. So I have to do 0 0.5. So 0 0.5. Actually, if I made these zero, then I can make this um, one and then two. No, it's not really any better. I'll make this 0.5, one, 1.5, two. I was trying to find a way to make it like just a quarter, but I don't think I can do that. So that's okay. So the first point, the x value is 0.053. That's point, that's about here. This is 0 0.05 and 0 0.053 is about there. And then I go up to about 0.51. It's about there, okay? Second point is 0.106. This is 0.1. This is 0.15, this is 0.11. So it's about here. And then 0.907. Each one of these is a tenth, so let's say about there. 0.158, 1, 5, 1, is about here. 1.56, 2, 5 is about there. And then 0 0.211, 2, 1, 1, a little over there. Um, the y value is 1.78. So this is 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, 1.78 is about there. Do I have this one right? 1.5, no, uh, 0 0.15, 6, 7, 8, 9, 2, 6 is there. And the y value is 1.56. Oh, it should be a little bit lower. This is 1.6, so it should be about 
here instead. That's why I had that wrong. Okay. Now we're going to attempt to uh, draw a line. Oh, my line's not great, huh? Just do it like that, and then attempt to calculate the slope of this line. Um, at this point, oops, let me switch into a line. This point, and we'll say this point. This point is point one, one, comma, one. This point is point. One five one six one seven point one seven, comma one point five. So if I do the slope, the change in y, one point five minus one over point one seven minus point one one, I get point five over point zero six, eight point three three. I must have plotted this really badly. Point five, point zero five. Point five one should be maybe a little bit lower. Point one. That's right. Point nine oh seven. Uh, pretty close. Point one five eight. Got that right. And then one point five six. It's about right. Point two one one two one five six seven eight. I don't know. I got eight point three three meters per second squared. Not great. It really probably should have come out a little bit better than that. Um, you could have attempted to solve for the, each of these, like just using this equation, um, like solving for g. I could have done this divided by this. I'm just curious like how good the numbers are supposed to be, um, just as a comparison point. So if I do four pi squared times m1 times r, eight, divided by p squared. I'm gonna divide that by 0 0.02. Yeah, my data probably should have been a little bit closer. Um, I'm really terrible at plotting these things, though. That is ultimately the problem. Oh, actually, no. Some of these, some of these data are just a little bit off. Okay. That's fine. It, you know they measured it. You know I think they maybe use some somewhat semblance of a real data, but um, yeah, that's generally the setup. Hopefully, hopefully it all made sense when you do these experimental things. It's never the data is never exactly right. Got to check the data a few times, and maybe you just didn't measure it correctly. Um, but hope you guys found that helpful. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Please leave a comment, like, or subscribe below to catch up more of the content. And see any links below. I offer free homework help on uh, Twitch and Discord. See you guys in the next video.